evening and welcome to the parent impact thank you for joining us for tonight's episode we appreciate you coming by and spending your time with us tonight i'm your host Hafshir cosby and this is being presented by the national parents union so it seems like forever since I've seen everybody, right? I missed one week last week, and it just seems like forever since I've had the opportunity to talk and have everybody come on the show and then see what it is that we're talking about. So again, thank you for, for being here tonight on this Tuesday. You could have been anywhere, but you're here with us watching our show. And thank you, we appreciate you. So some updates. We normally talk about some updates first that are happening in Newark and in New Jersey. So our first update is it's cold and it went from like 90 degrees to like 55 degrees. I, I don't know where that came from. I actually have on like a three quarter length sweater because it's kind of cold and the heat is not coming on until sometime in October. So I control my own heat, but it's not coming on until October. So I'm going to keep my sweaters on and keep my sweatpants on and everybody try and stay warm out there because I think it threw us all for a loop. I don't think any of us expected it to be this cold today. So I think it's I think it's nationwide cold too. I don't think it's just us in North or New Jersey. I think some of the other states got like a, a small cold to that. So that's that's new. That's new. <laughs> so um, for our New Jersey update, every everyone's talking about school. Everyone's talking about education. Everyone's talking about the kids now going back. Every school district is now back to school in some form or fashion, either remotely or in person or some hybrid of, of such. So it's, it's a waiting game for families to see what's going to happen over the next few months with our COVID diagnosis and whether we continue to keep our numbers low enough so schools can actually open back up. But everybody's in school. Some people had some challenges at the beginning. Some schools went smoothly. Um, but I think that, you know, parents, the good thing is that parents are expressing how they are feeling. They are reaching out for assistance um, and really connecting with their communities of other parents and families to share their experiences and best practices and things that have been working for them, which would ultimately be helpful with their children. So I like that families are, are talking more, even if it's on the internet, you know, people are still talking about the, the struggles and, and challenges they're having. Um, so they're airing them out and then they can actually get help from other people um, who either have these challenges or have found solutions to be able to help. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. Um, it's also National Hispanic Heritage Month here in New Jersey. Um, we're proud of our diversity and the unity that we have in our state. So happy Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, to all of our families. So our Newark update, um, not too much happening in Newark um, right now, but we do have something really, really awesome and fantastic happening this week in Newark. It is the Newark Harvest uh, Citywide Garden Tour Festival that we have happening this week. We have, you know, I don't even know how many gardens we have actually in the city of Newark. I think there are 10 gardens that are participating in the uh, Harvest Festival this week. And I'm just so happy and excited to have so many gardens within our city. You know, we, we all know about food deserts happening in some cities where families don't have access to fresh food and, and fresh fruit and things like that. They have to pay more money for their groceries at some of our local stores. So we are happy and ecstatic that this is happening this week in Newark where the tour is going to different gardens. There are going to be different events that are happening. It started yesterday. Um, if you want to check it out, you can go to NorkCFS.org or SASLocal.com. You can go to either one of those and check out the week-long festival that's happening in our city. So tonight, we are excited to talk to Mr. Bilal Walker, who actually is part of the Newark um, Food Festival tour, the garden tour. He actually is an educator, an activist, and now he also wears the hat of farmer. <laughs> so we're happy to have Bilal here talking to us tonight and let's bring him on in. Can you hear us? Hey, good evening. You might have to take yourself off mute. I think you're still on mute. <laughs> can you hear me? Okay. I can. 
Okay, okay cool. awesome. Now I can hear you. Awesome. <laughs> Welcome. How no, are you? Thank you for having me. I'm doing well. How are you? Thank you. I'm good. I'm, I just, you know, you heard me talk about it being cold. I, I don't know if that's going to affect, like, you know, the gardens or, you know, the tour this week. I hope not. I hope people still go out there, even when the weather's a little cold. We're, we're New Jerseyans. We, we're used to it. Like, it's nothing new. I know. <laughs> so let's get on. I know. <laughs> it is a little um, shocking to see the the weather change, but I mean, with, with global warming and, I mean, just with Jersey in general, like, the weather can be really unpredictable, so... Agreed. Hopefully, it's, it warms up a little bit. Hopefully, yeah, I hope so. But I'm, I'm sure it's not going to stop people from coming out to the festival as long as it's not raining. No. You know, people can no. come out. For the most part, people are really eager to get out the house, so it's it's pretty cool to to see people want to come to the garden and do the garden. This garden tour is really cool, so I'm excited. It really is me too because I didn't even realize we had this many gardens in in the city of Newark. You know, I yeah, know that, um, you blessed us last weekend right with being able to come to your amazing space um no i appreciate you coming you know you all were the first uh parent organization to to host anything there so it's, a, it's definitely a, we're grateful for you for sure anytime we get to engage with parents and you know parents can see uh the garden as a extension of like a meeting space that you know they may not have access access to now then you all are always welcome Awesome. Thank you so much. I, I, we, I feel so proud having been now the first <laughs> parent the organization. First, to, to the first parent family. organization, yes. We, we had a fantastic time. We love having our brunch and chat live on the Union Garden. Cool. We definitely be back. So Great. let's talk a little bit about you, right? I introduced you <laughs> as an educator, an activist, and now you wear the hat of farmer. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself um, and how you've been faring during this COVID-19. So my name is Bilal Walker. I am a husband, an educator, a son. You know, I'm your typical, you know, man. But just recently, I became a farmer, and um, I've always been really passionate about creative placemaking. And I think that it's really interesting to see what you can do with empty spaces. I don't know why. I think it's cool, but. I do. I got really inspired working with uh, Anthony Smith from Lincoln Park Coast Cultural, Coast Cultural District. Um, he taught me a lot about creative placemaking and I interned with them for a while and they were just really like, they were doing things with like vacant lot activation and curating events that I didn't see anywhere else. Not to say that it wasn't happening in other places, but on that scale, I always thought it was really cool. Um, and I thought about you know gardening as an as an option because I've seen like gardens around in Newark and passing them and I decided why not like this is this is a a pretty cool thing to to try to research. My wife is um, she still studies like policies and she's very focused on like you know um, child health and well being and underserved communities. So we just talk a lot and we just ended up coming to this idea that, yo, a garden to feed people would be super cool. And it's like, all right, it's cool. Absolutely, and I love it. I, I, I love the, the picking of the space and turning it into something beautiful, right? So it's not just an empty lot sitting there, people to throw garbage in. Um, but you're not a full-time farmer, right? So we know that you're not a full-time farmer. So tell us, what, what else do you have that you have going on in your life besides being a farmer? Um, I'm a, a college student again. Um, I'm in a new master's program to study child policy and advocacy. Uh, I still work in education. Um, I'm a program manager. Um, so I kind of get a little flexibility in designing programming for young people, which is something I'm extremely passionate about. Uh, and then aside from that, uh, I'm a farmer and it takes up a, a tremendous amount of time, uh, way more than I anticipated. And I have such a respect for um, this black real like birthright, you know, the historical context with black people and agriculture is just I feel it's fulfilling for sure, but it is a t it takes up, you know, some time and you learn and it's really relaxing. Yeah, 
And a lot of times we don't think about like urban farms, right? We, we don't really think about, you know, just we, we think about urban areas, asphalt, asphalt jungle, you know, different crime happening and things like that. But then we don't think about these beautiful spaces that you guys are actually creating out here for, for people to come, like you said, and get food, um, fresh food, have that food be farm to table food where people can <laughs> you know, cook tonight's dinner, make something healthy, mm -hmm. enjoy a new vegetable that they may have never tried before, you know, go right. to your garden and have something. Because I know you had some amazing herbs um, and, and vegetables in your garden. Um, I know Thank you. Talking about some eggplant. I told you, when you get some eggplant in there, definitely <laughs> give me a call because that's one of my favorites. Okay. You know, I love to get like a fresh eggplant, um, some cucumbers to go on my mm -hmm. salad. I made myself a salad earlier. Um, the cucumbers keep getting eaten. We had a few. Um, and, you know, we have some groundhogs that come in and kind of eat up the cucumbers. So we took those out and we just planted some some fresh herbs. Herbs seem to do really well there. Okay. Um, and just, you know, for context, you know, we're, we're located at 29 Grafton Avenue. Uh, the space was once a vacant lot for about 15 years. Uh, there was a bodega next door and, you know, people, you know, frequented the the bodega and, uh, you know, th that lot was just always there. It's just a part of that community. Um, graffiti artists have come in there over the last 15 years and done numerous, numerous amounts of like graph work. Um, so there's like, so there's so much like culture tied into the space itself that, um, aside from us trying to connect with families and like close that food, the food poverty gap for, for North Ward families, we also want to create spaces where people would come in and, you know, have community based workshops, advocacy campaigns, whatever the case may be, so that there's a safe space for people in, in that community for sure. Absolutely. And tell us a little bit more about the name. I hope I'm saying this right. Jana? on Grafton. Am I saying that right? Jenna. 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 Oh, good. I was practicing this too to make sure I was going to get it right. It's cool, Jenna right? on Grafton. So tell us a little bit about the name and, and, and what it means to you. Okay, cool. So um, Jenna is an Arabic word. It means paradise. And uh, as I was thinking about uh, the garden and thinking about like this project to activate a vacant lot was stuck out to me and my wife was just like the religious connotation um, that we believe as Muslims comes along with sowing seeds and feeding people. So we thought like paradise uh, should be for people, you know, regardless of uh, where they live, everyone should have, you know, a space that just feels peaceful to them. and um we believe that like even saying rest in peace you know why do our people have to wait until they get to you know why do they have to die before they experience peace and get to heaven or you know um we lose loved ones and we're like okay they're finally at peace they should be able to have peace in their own community they should just feel that it should just be a space for them to get that so that's what we want the garden to really we're hopeful that's a that's a, a large hope that it can become something like that uh, for that community because they deserve it. Every ward deserves it. All of our, our families deserve these spaces uh, to just get fresh, locally grown uh, product and be able to know how to cook with the food and you know implement it in their everyday diet so that we live longer, so that, you know, our young people can go to school and they can focus. You got kids going to school that don't got nothing to eat. Like they can't focus in school. Right. So it's a sad situation. Um, and we don't, it's has to be like uh, the end all be all to food poverty in, in the North Ward. But we are hopeful that we can continue to feed people through our partnerships um, with organizations like Table to Table. Uh, Scopel's Hospitality Group has been tremendous uh, and just, overwhelmingly generous during COVID with assisting us with any food pantries that we have. So today we've fed 450 people and definitely eager to around Thanksgiving have a really, uh, you know, large 
um, donation and hopeful to connect with some some organizations, maybe get Parent Impact together and a whole bunch of other organizations that want to make sure people are taken care of. Absolutely. And I love that. I, I love the idea of feeding the community, right? Like even even just a, a small space, right? Like a space that used to be graffiti or just used to be a space that was not used now being a space used to be able to, to feed healthy food to our communities because we, we need it everywhere. We, we definitely need to make sure that we have more healthy food in our communities. Um, we, so I know it wasn't easy, right? Because like you didn't come from like a line of farmers, right? Like you're not from like the immediate South, you know, where your family had like a farm in the backyard or, or something like that. So tell well, us well, well, <laughs> well, give us more of your backstory then. Cause I'm like, I, I know, I know you had some challenges creating this farm, but maybe you did it. Maybe farming is in your blood. Um, so I would definitely say that farming is in my family's blood. Okay. Uh, most of my family is originally from the rural South. Uh, my mother's family uh, is Geechee. Uh, we come from the coast of South Carolina uh, and we've harvested rice for generations. We've harvested, you know, um, different plant life down there. Tobacco grows really, you know, well in South Carolina as well. So we we have a lot of land there. And uh, I just think that is it's somewhat genetic. And then my great grandmother, uh, she helped raise me. She was very gifted with just like house plants and then plants that she would grow outside. So she would take me and just like show me different things and tell me like, oh, you put eggshells in a um, in a house plant, there's like calcium or something in it that's gonna make it, you know, feel happy. So I used to just watch what my grandmother did. Now, growing outside is definitely different, and I have mentors, people that support me in learning. I'm still learning. I'm in no way, shape, or form a master gardener. Um, I was grateful to have um, very early on, like, knowledgeable people from the urban gardening or urban farming community here in Newark take me to the side and be like, look, bro, this is how you need to, to move, or these are, these are best practices, or else, you know, this is how you should you should probably get it done. And I was like, all right, cool. Sure. That's good. Yes. Wow. I, I love that it's in you then. then. See, that's something I didn't even know. I didn't know you came from, you know, such a long line of um talented folks who 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 grow, you know, from, from the earth using their hands and using their know-how and, and passing it on to generations. That's that's amazing. So it was in you, right? So you you were definitely I didn't even know. I didn't know. <laughs> I really didn't we're know. We're destined for this. This this was part of your calling. I know you you do a lot of like activism work and and you know you taught a lot of students and children over the years. Um, I think this is just part of of your fantastic story. You know, as as a community person living in the city of Newark, you know, a, a man living in our city who now is bringing this this wonderful skill and talent to our city to be able Thank to. You. Do, to feed our families, you know, and like I said, give them healthy food, and and I love it. I love that you have this background. I have to come over there so I can uh, get a get a an actual like lesson on how to grow. Because we were talking about this earlier. I was in, we had like a coffee um, break with our national parents union. We get together and just right. you know, talk about stuff. And I was just telling them like I have a black thumb. I cannot save a plant. I it's amazing my kids are still alive because I <laughs> my my growing skills. Not so great. Um, really? My, my daughter, when my daughter went away to Cyprus for school for three months, yeah. I had wow. to watch my grand plants. And they were my grand plants, and I talked to them. But she had, like, um, a cactus and, like, a, a, a succulent. So, like, those are easy. You give them water once a week, okay. and they're fine. Anything else? Forget it. Uh, <laughs> succulents are a little. Succulents are tricky. They can be a little tricky. Um, kind of... Even to your point about like uh, learning and like we, we not only want to just teach people, we, we, well, we, we, we need to teach people. Um, I think sometimes I focus on uh, just sharing so much of our amazing partners because it helps us to impact a larger amount of people than what we are really growing inside the garden. And that's because this is a pilot for us and we're learning how to yield the most product what type of produce do our families want? What does the typical family in the North Ward 
what does their financial or, or living situations or conditions look like that makes them a family uh, that qualifies for the programming we're trying to do here. We essentially want to feed 20 families, but what we've began to notice is that based on what we grew, um, the yield is not nearly enough and um, we need to pivot on uh, the types of produce that we want to plant for our next growing season. We need to pivot on maximizing space. We need to consider whether or not we need to look for additional spaces to create more gardens, to feed more people. Um, but it's just it's just been a learning process. And I'm really inspired by people like Tobias Fox, um, all of these gardeners all over the city that have been doing this work for like 10, 12 years, well before I even got into the lot. Tobias has been doing this with North Science and Sustainability for a really long time. And it's really amazing to see all of the tra transformative work that they've done and how it's translating into land acquisition within the city and things that they're able to, um, they're really creating a new food system with what they're doing. And, or I should say what we're doing because Jenna and Grafton is a part of new community okay. food system. We're a part of their advisory board. So, um, we take our insight and best practices and um, and skill-based learning. We want to mirror a lot of what they're doing and you know take things one step at a time so that we can empower more people to get gardens. We want to get people uh, trained and equipped with the skills necessary to grow their own food. And we also want to teach people, hey, if you want to acquire your own garden, this is how you develop a proposal. This is who you need to speak to. This is how you need to go about presenting this information. Yeah, and have that information is passed on, especially to our younger people, right? Absolutely, I mean, absolutely. That's, that's an important skill. You never know when you may need to learn how to grow your own food. I mean, this is totally anything could happen these, these days. Like, you, you just, you just really, really never know. Um, you know, and, and this is about, like food disparities and health disparities, right? Um, and right. You know that food deserts are real. You know, we know that people have to go out and spend a bunch of money. They don't get as fresh food as they would normally get. Um, and that was actually going to be my question for you. Like, why is it important for people to, to learn how to <laughs> grow food in their own communities and the importance of the farm to table food? Like, why, why is that important in our community, especially our African-American communities and our urban communities? Um, it's really important because Black people will continue to starve if we do not. And I mean, if you look at the work of Fannie Lou Hamer, if you look at um, you look at the Panther Party and the work that they were doing around organizing to to close food disparity gaps in urban communities, setting up breakfast so kids can go to school. Though that, that's what my my leaders did. I respect that, and I I have enough common sense to know that if I continue to see something repeatedly happening, it's probably going to continue to happen. So I encourage people to consider, really consider uh, Black people to, we need to shift our focus a little more to environmental justice because environmental justice is where everything is lying. If our kids don't have food, they're going into our school buildings and they're not in a good space. We don't want that for them. And nobody wants to send their child to school knowing that if my child wasn't going to school, they probably wouldn't have the best breakfast. So they, you know, they they may not have breakfast at all. Um, right. So we we think about even asthma and you know the pollution that we have in urban communities. So we, we we're two for two. We got food deserts. It's not enough food for people. Then we getting hit with air pollution. Now our kids got asthma. Exactly. And you got kids. You know really struggling to breathe on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so I, I think overall environmental justice is like a, a really uh, strong focus that I would like to continue my research on as far as my hopes of becoming like an anthropologist and just studying black communities, black countries, um, learning more about how um, the destruction of an environment takes a toll on the people. Yeah. Especially African Americans, and especially and African Americans, not, you know, low income communities. Um, yes, you know, uh, we talk a lot about not having a lot of um, people not knowing about having fresh food in their communities, and really 
being able to take that fresh food from farm to table and even knowing how to cook mm-hmm. it, right? A lot of people, you know, we get, think about something like a collard green, right? I mean, we, we, we cook that thing to death, right? We, yeah. I mean, it's good, but like, you know, we add oil and weed and seasoning, you know, and all those things that go in it. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's sometimes unhealthy, you know, we love it, but it's, it can be, Look, you know, I'm, I'm going to put it to you like this. <laughs> I'm going to keep it 100% with you. My turkey neck needs to be inside my collard greens. <laughs> That's the best I can do. <laughs> my tur- my- <laughs> I want my smoked turkey neck inside my collard greens. But you don't have to eat that all the time. Right. Exactly. And I think learning how to eat our pleasure foods in moderation and also having a larger intake of fresh, locally grown, um, like varieties of greens. You got your mustard greens, you got kale, you got arugula. We can add a little more, introduce a little more into our diets, which is why we hope um, in, the, in the future that we can do cooking classes and workshops where we can take food directly from the garden. That's just saying doing a farm to table on site, teaching people, okay, we got collard greens in here. Let's show, show you maybe a, a more healthy alternative to cooking your collard greens. Maybe you can saute them or here's kale. This is it's similar to collard greens, but you might want to just eat it on your salad right. without no dressing. Right. <laughs> exposing people to different types, right, of, of yes. fruits and vegetables. I mean, I know lots of people who don't mm-hmm. eat things like squash or eggplant or, you know, some 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 even some, some different herbs. Some people are just like, I'm not eating that, but maybe they, they didn't have it cooked right, right? Maybe it didn't taste right the first time. But we want to make sure that people at least can can know about the food that's that's being offered and try it. You know, it's it's fresh food. You you know, so everything doesn't have to be cooked. You can eat some, you, some like you know what I think it is. I think it's the fact that we have so many fast food restaurants. It's ridiculous. People, black people, work really hard and. We don't make a lot for what we work for. And then we get home and we're tired and people are just like, you know what? Like, no, McDonald's, you know what? Check is chicken shack, like it's over. Like I'm not cooking tonight. Um, And they make it so, they make it so easy. They make it so easy for us to just walk into uh, a McDonald's and spend $10 and get a whole bunch of food as opposed to going to a, grocery store maybe for three dollars and fifty cent getting ahead of uh kale so it's like am i gonna get kale and i'm gonna only just have lettuce or am i going to get like another four or five burgers you know like what's what is it really is it worth it um and i think a lot of people choose it's not worth it yeah but then you also get the argument right from people that you know, fresh fruits and fresh fruits and vegetables can sometimes be more expensive than some of, of the, the average food. What what is the difference between like the cost of say a head of lettuce that you would get in a, a shop right or a head of mm-hmm. lettuce that you would get in a garden? Like if you actually go to a garden to kind of like purchase it from there. Like what is what would be like the cost difference, like the price difference? Um like would it be more if you go to the garden? Because it, it was like fresh picked or like fresh. no, you typically when you when you buy from a it de- well it could depend very that's it could depend on where it's being sourced from, so you could you know if you're a part of a co-op or if you're a person buying you know produce from a co-op then you could really get a ton of stuff for a little to nothing. Um, and I think that's kind of what's happening with people doing these boxes where you like, you can go online and just say, hey, I want a, a box of food, uh, of, of fruits and vegetables. Just give me a random array and people are just getting getting things. That could depend on the like the size of the, the farm that the food is being grown on. Um, the type of um, produce that is in the, the box or that you want to purchase. But when we weigh food, um, we typically weigh it at about um, retail market. If you choose to sell it at that rate, I mean, that's at the discretion of the farmer. Okay. Um, but we, we, we're we knowledgeable of the fact that if we wanted to sell food at, at this rate, then then we could. 
you don't find most farmers that typically like at least urban farmers that um sell too too much market rate and if they are then they probably do like a they have a large breadth of things that you can choose from and you know it the other part of the work is that it is ex it is expensive for farmers to grow food and um, to maintain these spaces uh, to make sure that they pay the registration fees to to be able to actually sell the food. Um, so a lot of different factors can come into it, but I find overwhelmingly that when people purchase from co-ops, they get a lot more breadth and depth for a lower price, um, and I think that's that's what you find in most urban farms that they tend to operate on some type of co-op style or if they are selling food they're typically giving a ton of it away sometimes there's so much growing that it goes to waste unfortunately right that box just gets full of more produce than then what you thought and north does have a what you even like yes so the okay there's there's some co-ops here in the city um, that Newark Science and Sustainability is uh, a part of like the urban app uh, cooperation, a cooperative, uh, which also encompasses uh, Greater Newark Conservancy. Um, and so they have a ongoing, I believe, weekly farmers market with uh, produce sourced from locally grown gardens. And the prices are really affordable. Like if, if you are, um, you know, a person looking to source their uh, produce locally, that's definitely an option that I would consider. Okay, thank you for that. That's that's good information. We'll have to make sure no that we get that out um, to our viewers so they can find out about that. Um, I knew there was a co-op. I think I looked it up a few years ago. I, I definitely need to start getting some more fresh fruit and vegetables in my life. I'm telling you about that. <laughs> I heard you. <laughs> so the the tour is happening this week. Um, like I told uh, everybody earlier, they can find out more about the tour on NorthCFS.org or uh, SASLocal.com. But specifically, mm -hmm. if you want to attend the AgroFest that's happening yes. at Jana, and I know I said that wrong, I'm going to get it right one of these days on Grass. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to talk a little bit about like what's happening there. We have the link for people to be able to register for the event. Mm -hmm. It's on the Facebook page. Um, so they're celebrating the end of the spring and summer growing season, as well as the first progress toward food sovereignty with the first annual Agro Festival. It's going to be Saturday, September the 19th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. It is going yes. to include garden tours, music, health screening, a candid combo with Tobias Fox, vegan meals. Y'all know, y'all know that's my favorite as a vegetarian. Um, so they're gonna have tours and teas, yoga, yoga sessions, um, sprout juice, toast off. So if you can on Saturday, Newark and surrounding cities, please come out to the Agua Fest. Please come out to this week's food tour. Yes, please food come. Garden, see what's there, right? We're super excited to have people come out um, because uh we probably will do a small trial of different um winter vegetables but the the process for us acquiring the space um through the adopt a lot process um and actually planting and transforming that space happened really 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 quickly um and so we were even shocked to see how well um the produce grew in there, but so much of what we grew is actually seasonal and probably won't survive much throughout the winter time, maybe, you know, early November. Um, hopefully we still, cause we have some, uh, some mustard greens in there that I hear will go into like November. So we'll try to get some greens and stuff planted, but this is us uh, just doing like uh, an acknowledgement of uh, where we, we want to see um, the garden go in the next, you know, year to two years and our hopes for uh, the future work at Grafton, uh, sharing our story with our partners and um, our colleagues, our family members, the people that have supported us um, and just impacting people, letting them know, like, you know, this is, you know, something that you can do. It's not out of, you know, the scope of um, a person's reach if they're interested in learning about urban farming or urban gardening. Um, and we're going to have a ton of different things, uh, even HIV testing, which is like <clears throat> we went back and forth um, 
with testing and uh, I'm super excited to share that uh, Hyacinth um, Foundation, which is a HIV AIDS Awareness Foundation that has been doing work in New Jersey for over 30 years. Um, it's going to have a table out there and a mobile testing unit for people that are interested. And this is, you know, for not just people who are coming into the garden, but people of the community. Um, a part of us acknowledging uh, where we want to go is acknowledging that that particular area um, has a high usage of drugs. Um, and from what we cleaned up in that garden, severe uh, heroin usage. Um, which puts people in the community at a higher risk of having HIV or AIDS. And um, our, our community uh, historically has saw that black and brown people during the late 80s and early 90s, you know, the heroin epidemic, the crack epidemic, it took Newark by storm. And it's affected so many uh, families in the community. It's affected people in my family, um, people that uh, had lives, that had identities, that didn't have a fighting chance um, because of the fact that they were Black and they couldn't afford that medication that white people could afford back then. And they didn't have the resources that other people had. Um, but so much of AIDS research and so much of its advocacy was built on the back of black uh, men and women of all um, sexualities. So I'm, I'm always going to um, highlight any opportunity I have to get people um, focused uh, on HIV AIDS awareness it's directly connected to the community. It's a health um, disparity that we're facing. So we encourage people to come out. If you don't know your status, make sure that you know. And thank you so much, Bilal. Thank you so much for all the work that you do for our families, the work you do in our communities, you know, bringing together the garden tour. And then, like you said, bringing the uh, Hyacinth Foundation in to come in. And, you know, it's about, it's not just about talking about the one thing of the food. We're talking about mm -hmm. people. We're talking about the health of people, right? Mm -hmm. Eating food, eating healthy food is one way that we can make sure our community is healthy but also making sure that they know the status, the HIV status. That's another way. And I think you do a lot of work also um, with uh, asthma, with, with children with childhood asthma, right? You want to definitely yes. uh, show awareness for that, for families that have children that have asthma and different triggers. And, and food is even one of the triggers, right? For, for yes. an asthma attack. So Absolutely. If we start to eat healthier, then we make sure that, that the children are healthy, our communities are healthy, um, and, and we're staying together as a community. So awesome. Absolutely. I love having this conversation with you. I, I love that. Well, I, I love what you're doing at your space. And um, the space is not just a garden, right? It's a space that people can actually rent and okay. have small events there. We had a fantastic yeah. event there. Um, I know there was a fantastic event that happened at the hours. I wanted to come back like, and spend some time <laughs> with, with, with those people and like their things. Those things uh, it was so amazing. Um, so, it was amazing. <laughs> so good. It looked so good. <laughs> And so Thank I know you. community, please come out this week, support your local urban farms, support your local urban farmers. Come out on Saturday, support Jana on Grafton, 29 Grafton Avenue in Newark. It's really easy to get to. It's right mm -hmm. off of um, McCarter Highway, 21. It's like one exit, a right turn, and you're right there. And, and it's, a, it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful space. So tell okay. us how people can get in touch with you, how they can learn more about Jana on Grafton. I know we have the information. Mm -hmm. Facebook, but how do people learn more? So, um, you know, for any questions, you all can reach uh, reach us at Jenna on Grafton. That's J A N N A H O N G R A F T O N uh, at gmail.com, and we'll respond to you shortly. Uh, we're always looking to connect with people and um, build partnerships. People, you know, want to come and visit the space, uh, and you know, just. We, we would love really when the health restrictions and things kind of slow down to have ongoing times where we can, you know, I mean, now is, is really the, the key time for us. We really wanted to have some type of instruction going on outside with young people. If we could have kind of made that into a classroom space or uh, also curating some type of like cafe style 
uh, workspace for people who just are like, you know, I don't want to be in the house, but I got to go to work. Like, I need some place to go sit down and work. And if I can sit in the garden with Wi-Fi and, you know, have that that luxury, I think we deserve it all. So I'll continue trying to figure out <laughs> how we're going to increase the space and make it more comfortable for people. Absolutely. Well, we, we appreciate you. And I will be the first to come you. and sit in that garden for the day <laughs> <laughs> and do my work and bring my tea and, and do my work. Thank you so much, Bilal. Thank you for what you're doing in our community. Um, thank you for listening to the, the message inside of you from your ancestors that says not only can you be an educated activist, but you also can be a farmer for our urban communities and I help you. our families and in everything you. that you do. Thank you so much. So we love having you right. as our guest tonight. And we look forward to, to having you again and seeing more about um, seeing more about what you do, right? And, and supporting you in every possible way that we can. So thank hey, you. you all let me know how I can support you. Um, I want I want us to continue to to figure out how we can maximize maximize the space for ongoing programming for you all. If 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 there's an opportunity to engage with parents, then just know that our doors are open. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's that's it's music to our ears. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. We always love to meet you. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, this was another fantastic episode of The Parent Impact. We thank you for coming by um, to talk to us today, to, to learn more about the urban gardens that are happening in the city of Newark. Please get out to the food tours. Again, if you want more information, it's NewarkCFS.org or SASLocal.com. You can connect with Jada on Grafton. They're on Instagram. Um, please check out more about the tour. Check out more fresh fruits and vegetables that are, that are grown locally in our city from farm to table. Um, really great opportunities for people to learn how to farm because it will be a useful skill. You never know what you might need. And also to provide food to families who um, would otherwise not have it. So thanks again for joining us. Um, we have 48 more days to go. We can't leave without talking about this election. We have 48 more days to go for this presidential election. Please, please learn when you need to fill out your voter registration in New Jersey. The last date to register is October the 13th. Please register by then. We now have online registration, which is something we've been waiting for for a very long time. Please make sure you register to vote. Please make sure you educate yourself. If you want more information, please make sure that your family also votes. This is our National Parents Union. Um, push for families to vote. It's called Every Family Votes. And we really want to make sure that families are having conversation around the dinner table, the breakfast table, about voting, the importance of voting. Yes, your vote matters. Your vote matters. Voting local matters. Getting excited about voting. And also building your voting muscles. So you're not just voting in the presidential election, but you're voting your, in your state elections. You're voting, voting in your local elections. So please, 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 New Jersey, um, I know we've been bombarded with it, but there's a reason why everybody's telling you to vote because your vote is your voice and it matters. So let's make sure that every single person in your family is voting, every family votes. Every person who can vote is casting that ballot and filling out that voter registration. If you wanna learn more about us at The Parent Impact, please hit us up on Facebook at The Parent Impact or follow us online. Go to our website, www.parentimpact.org. Thank you. Have a good night. See everybody next week. Okay.